The Many Missions to Mars Hey everyone, it's Alexa again and welcome back to another video. We've now been visiting and exploring Mars for many years, but what do you really know about the missions that have helped us learn so much about our neighbor in the solar system? Here, we'll walk you through some of the good times and the bad times, the successes and the failures, and teach you a little bit about the missions launched to help us understand the red planet. Get prepared to want to bust out your telescope. Getting to Mars is pretty tough. We've been enraptured by the possibility of sending human beings to Mars for some time now. Ever since Karabal 4, a Russian craft in 1960, we've been sending uncrewed missions to the red planet in hopes of someday putting actual people on the surface. But as of 2019, there have been 56 Mars missions, which sounds like a lot, but consider that only 26 of those have been successful. This just goes to show how difficult it really is to get to the planet not all that far from our own. More recently, in 2016, a joint effort between between Russia and the European Space Agency called ExoMars Orbiter or Schiaparelli Demo Lander made it to the planet, but the lander was lost quickly after arriving. Travel to Mars must be timed precisely. We are not very dumb creatures. Thus, we wait until Mars is as close to us as possible within a reasonable amount of time before we send new missions to the planet. This synodic period, basically when Earth and Mars are at their closest points in their approach to one another, happens every 779.9 days, or a little over every two years. This helps not only save on the amount of time our crafts spend traveling to the planet, but also saves us a heck of a lot of fuel. Typically, the amount of time it takes one of our spacecraft to get to Mars is about seven months, so thankfully we've thought through that synodic period. There is also a 16-year cycle, where the amount of energy we need to expend to get there fluctuates a little bit. So missions within 16 years of each other will cost different amounts even with launching two years apart in that special window. Missions in 1969 and 1971 cost less than missions in the later 70s because of this. Space travel can be really tricky. First photographs. Mariner 4 was a spacecraft designed by NASA, and it was the fourth of a series of space vehicles intended to explore the surface of a planet from a distance. Of course, Mariner 4's planet was Mars, and it provided us with the first ever up-close pictures of the planet. The probe took 22 photos of the surface in July of 1965, and it did so at an approximate altitude of 6,100 miles. Mariner 4 also gathered data from the planet while up so close, and it detected its intrinsic magnetic field and collected information confirming the makeup of the planet's atmosphere, which is mainly carbon dioxide. Communications with Mariner 4 were cut in 1967, although it is still out there and is currently in orbit around the sun. Speaking of pictures and firsts, the Viking 1 orbiter was launched on August 20, 1975, aboard a Titan IIE Centaur launch vehicle, and that was the start of a mission that would bring us the first ever pictures from the Martian surface. The orbiter was dropped into the orbit of the planet on June 19, 1976, and it landed on the planet on the 7th anniversary of the moon landing by Apollo 11, July 20, following a delay. Just 25 seconds after arrival, Viking 1 began transmitting what it saw back to Earth, which took about four minutes to get here. But when it did, we got a high-resolution picture, and it was magnificent. The mission's other objectives included collecting data on the Martian atmosphere and soil analysis to look for any signs of life. We got a bad first impression. Well, not bad per se, but we got the wrong first impression of Mars when some of the first photographs of the planet were sent back. The Russians tried and tried and tried to get a craft to fly by Mars. However, five vehicles they sent that were intended to collect data near the planet failed. The Americans made it first, but their first attempt, using Mariner 3, was a failure as well. Then it just so happened that the first three crafts to finally reach Mars and send back pictures, Mariner 4, 6, and 7, all flew over heavily cratered areas on the planet. This led us Earthlings to believe that the surface was heavily pockmarked by asteroids, much like the surface of our moon. Don't get us wrong, there are definite impact craters on the face of Mars, but nothing like what we see on our own satellite. Mariner 9 changed everything. Well, considering we thought that Mars was just covered in craters due to the photographs from earlier Mariner missions, when Mariner 9 arrived at Mars, what it saw came as a bit of a shock to everyone. It got to the planet on November 14, 1971, and at first it encountered a gigantic dust storm that basically engulfed the entire planet. That was surprising enough. However, there seemed to be something poking out of the dust in places, which captured the interest of scientists. Then, when the dust settled, giant dormant volcanoes could be seen on the landscape, and 
And as an even bigger surprise, there was a considerable rift that scarred a portion of the planet. This rift would later be named Valles Marineris, and it's a defining feature on Mars we know today. Mariner 9 spent about a year circling Mars, and in that time it sent back 7,329 incredible photos. Water ice on the planet. Like its older sibling, the Viking 2 lander also got to experience a first that no other piece of equipment or anything else from Earth got to. It took the first color picture of the Martian surface that showed signs of water ice. Now, it wasn't the first color photograph taken from the surface. That distinction goes to the Viking 1 lander, but it is the first to show that there is frozen water on the planet. It took the picture from Utopia Planitia, its landing site 124 miles west of Mie Crater on May 18, 1979, although it wasn't transmitted back to Earth from the Viking 2 orbiter until June of the same year. The ice is only a maximum of one one-thousandth of an inch in thickness and is mixed with frozen carbon dioxide. Americans have had eight successful landings on Mars. While it's sometimes easy for things to get forgotten and pushed into the past, let's not forget that there were successful missions before those of Spirit and Opportunity. Viking 1 and 2 were both highly successful, and they gave us some of the first looks at Mars and its surface up close, as we explained before. There was also the Pathfinder mission, which launched the Sojourner rover on the surface. Then, in 2004, both Spirit and Opportunity found success and far outlasted their operational lifespans. Next came Phoenix in 2008, and then Curiosity, which is still out there doing its thing on the Martian surface and whose mission has been extended indefinitely. It's been on Mars for 2,327 souls, or 2,391 days as of this writing on February 22nd, 2019. We also have InSight, which landed on November 26th, 2018, and is the newest and most recent vehicle landed on the big red ball. Its job is to try and study the deep interior of the planet. Gaining insight into Mars's weather. Well, we think we may know why the newest vehicle to make it to Mars is called InSight. Just a few days ago, it was announced that the robotic lander is now capable of giving accurate weather reports day by day, and anyone can check out just how our neighbor is doing. It collects the information every second and then sends an average back daily. The lander is set to stay on the planet for the next two years, enough time to check out how the weather changes throughout the seasons. So if you're ever feeling down about the weather in your city or town, just take a look at the conditions in site has to deal with on the Martian surface. Chances are you'll feel a little better about your small section of the universe. Water on a Wasteland Two of NASA's highly successful rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, were launched from Earth in 2004. Once they were there, they found plenty of evidence to support the idea that there was once water flowing on and probably under the surface of Mars. On the surface, there are several closed-off depressions with rivers that lead to them, and it's thought that these were lakes once upon a time. Spirit landed in what was believed to once be a lake bed, and is thought to have found hints of water in a rock dubbed Humphrey. It also explored Gusev Crater and found evidence of water in its Columbia Hills. Opportunity found evidence of an area that once flowed with groundwater in Burns Cliff and Endurance Crater. It also, in subsequent reports, found evidence that the area was once covered in liquid water long ago. End of an opportunity. For real, there are no more opportunities for NASA's Opportunity rover to explore the surface of Mars. The rover, which we already know landed on the surface of the planet in 2004, was finally declared dead on February 13th, 2019. The rover that helped find evidence of water on the planet found meteorites sitting on the surface and determined that the red planet may have at one time been habitable for millions of years finally concluded its mission. The rover had an anticipated operational lifespan of about 90 souls following its landing. Although with careful operation, it managed to stay alive and well for 5,111 souls. This means it exceeded its plan of operation by 14 years and 46 days, which is 55 times longer than what was expected. A giant dust storm in 2018 made the rover lose communication with Earth on June 10th, and on June 12th, it entered hibernation. It never rebooted. We've seen some excellent information about the Mars missions so far, and we still have a little more to go. But first, we'd like to ask, what would you like to see come from the Mars missions in the future? Are you looking forward to attempts at colonizing our neighbor in the solar system, or do you think it's all a bit of science fiction dreaming? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. The future. Now, with InSight having landed on the surface of the planet last year, Mars exploration isn't over. There's also Curiosity pushing on with its mission as we here back on Earth mourn the loss of 
opportunity, arguably the best vehicle we have ever sent to explore that other world. We have the Mars 2020 rover mission coming up just next year, but we are only one of many countries gearing up for launch. In 2020, we'll see the most spacecraft we've ever had head for Mars at the same time, so the future for Mars is looking good. Although at the moment we don't know what NASA is up to, as they don't have anything planned for the planet following Mars 2020. There has to be something in the works, though. We mean, the agency plans on sending real-life human beings there in the next 20 or so years, so no matter what happens, we're sure we'll be getting more awesome Mars action soon enough. Wow.